Hi, this is David Strait with the Weathermatic Technical Support Team. In today's video, I wanted to give you a brief walkthrough on how to use the SmartLink remote application on your Apple or Android smartphone. This can be downloaded both from the Apple App Store as well as the Google Play Store for your device. Now, I already have the device downloaded on my home screen here. As you can see, the thumbnail on the bottom left corner of my applications. I'm going to go ahead and click it now to open it. Now, as it opens, we can see that it welcomes you, or in this case, me. I just want to point out at the top right corner of the screen, you'll see the profile settings icon. Basically, you click on that, you'll be able to visit the SmartLink website, the language portal to be able to change your language. Uh, you can report an issue to support directly or log out of the device. Now, if you turn your attention to the bottom of this uh, menu, you'll notice the version that you're currently operating the SmartLink web application, or sorry, the SmartLink remote app on your device. In this case, it's version 5.7.5. All right, let me close that up. Now, you can search for a site specifically here in the search bar, or you can pick from the site closest to you if you have GPS locate turned on in your privacy settings for the SmartLink remote application. I'm gonna go ahead and choose the Cancer Care Centers of Brevard, which is closest to me to open up and access that controller. Uh, from the initial uh, site opening, we see the seven day history here, or the we see the week, week long history here. Uh, we had an average high of 66 and an average low of 47, and we had no runtime. Due to the weather conditions, this system that operates in smart mode did not have enough deficit to generate any watering over the course of the last seven days. Uh, as you can see below the bar graph chart, uh, we have our controller. In this case, it's named the SL1600. You will see your uh, custom names for your controllers set up in SmartLink for uh, the site that you're accessing. If there are multiple controllers, you will see them all listed below. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and open up the controller. Now we can see our run status, our watering mode, our signal strength, and weather, weather status of the system as it is currently from the last receive. And then below, we can operate our zones manually. We can adjust programming. We can perform an inspection or we can jump into the web portal of the SmartLink uh, controller in the cloud services here. Now, as you'll notice, uh, there's a pencil here adjacent to the run condition. If I open that up, I can switch the system into remote off. I can also adjust the watering mode. And all I would need to do is click update status, and then we'll send that command from the app up to the cloud and down to the controller's panel so that we can update the system to the configuration you would like at this time. So you might have some winter weather coming in, a lot of rain if we're in the summer, and you want to be able to suspend the operations uh, for a few days, and you can simply send the remote off command. All right, so that was successfully completed. Uh, the next thing we have is our watering mode. Now, right now, this is something where we would uh, be able to just only the watering mode, but we're still seeing the run status here as we saw on the previous um, run status function. Those should be categorized by their um, operating capacity of the controller. Uh, so that's obviously a little bug that we have going on right now that we'll get that taken care of. We just launched an update uh, last week uh, to this application. So we're in the smart watering mode. I'm going to leave that as B, but I'm going to go ahead and put the controller back in the uh, run status. Update that since I do want the controller to run if we uh, reach minimum deficit. So I'll wait for that command to be completed. All right. Next thing we have is signal strength. Now, this, uh, the four bars here allows us, just like a smartphone, to see you know, what our connectivity looks like. Um, if you want to see the actual signal strength information, click on the little question mark here, and we'll see your strength in DBMs with a percentage and then our bit error rate. Now, negative 51 DBM is the best possible strength you could get. 100% is best. And our bit error rate 
we want to see that that is below 6 to 12 percent. The closer we are to 0 0.2 percent, the stronger the signal. All right, I'll go ahead and close that. Then our weather status is just telling us that it's normal if it was rain or freeze. Um, nothing to do there. Uh, below those four items, we have our zones that we can manually run or adjust. Our programming that we can manually run. Uh, we can perform an inspection and we can also move from the web um, sorry from the remote app to the web platform by simply clicking here on the bottom so i'll open up zones you'll see the zones listed below if you click on the zone that you wish to activate you can edit this time but by default all the zones will be set to two minutes so for zone one i can simply say that i want to run this zone manually for eight minutes while i do my uh, wet check or if I'm just needing to run uh, some color beds or new shrubs that I've installed, and then I'll sim simply select um, the play button or the activate button below and send this eight minute command out to the zone. All right, as you can see, that zone is now active and it will count down as we work our way through the amount of time programmed. If you wanna click program here, we can take a look at if we're in program A, B, C, or D and what our current smart settings are. If you click on edit settings, you can manipulate the customized settings here for your smart uh, settings. If you need to set custom, you can adjust your precipitation rate in a numerical value versus just picking the default based on the type of device that you're using. So in this case, let's just say I wanted to customize one inch for these shrubs in this loam soil. I don't have a slope and I am trimming this factor to 10% less because it's got uh, some northerly exposure and uh, doesn't quite get the sun that um, other zones require. So I'm trying to take 10% of that off to prevent from overwatering the beds. All right, I'm not going to save those settings since I'm not looking to actually manipulate that. We'll go back. We could pick our rotor zone. And we could say that we want to run this zone here. Now, you'll notice the arrows at the bottom of the screen. That allows you to simply navigate uh, forward and backward through the zones so that you don't have to actually click on the zones up here in the top left. So I'll press the left arrow now, and we can cycle back to zone four, three, two, and one. I'm oh, sorry. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and send a stop all command right now. So we're going to stop the uh, zone that I've activated. I'm going to go ahead and go back to the main screen here and we can look at our programming. And here, as you can see, the basic runtime that's entered showing that program A is going to run for about two hours and 55 minutes if I wanted to activate this program now uh, to initiate a full cycle through the system. Uh, for, I'm, I'm not going to do that at this time because there's no reason for me to do that. If I click on settings, you can see that I'm watering on Tuesdays and Saturdays starting at uh, 2 a.m. All right, I'll press back on programs, exit out here, and we'll move on to inspections. Inspections is where we can actually perform a wet check and document uh, what exactly it is that we're, we're finding on the system. So I'm just going to set up a, a test for this uh, system at this time, and we're going to start this inspection. Now we'll scroll down. If you have any comments that you'd like, you can make up to seven different comments if you wish to do so in this uh, inspection. As you scroll down to the zones, if you were to um, click on the zone number, you can start that zone. I'll do that now. We can see what program we're running, where the zone is um, located. If we had the square footage input, we'd be able to see that. We have our sprinkler type information for our smart settings. We can adjust that in the inspection as we're doing that as well if we need. Um, we can take pictures. If we click, click on the symbol here at the end, the positive symbol, you can take a photo, uh, pick a photo from the library or take a photo of the incident or the item that you're seeing right now out there that you'd like to report, whether it's a broken lateral line, a damaged valve cover, uh, broken or plugged sprinklers, 
you know, whatever that picture needs to be. And you can put as many pictures as you'd like in each zone as you're walking through the inspection. Now here we have a zone notes um, area. If you click on that, you can enter zone uh, comments as you're walking uh, through the system. Be sure to click save when you are finished. And once you've completed your inspection, uh, you'll scroll back to the top and you will save that. But the inspections is, uh, is a huge part of why people sign up for SmartLink Network uh, is to be able to perform these inspections. You'll see that uh, you can pass or fail a valve. Uh, you can report how many clogged nozzles you may see or may have found. Uh, if you have blocked heads, broken heads, if you need to raise or lower heads, if you have broken drip or micro spray irrigation, laterals, mains, is this work in your scope for your customer or out of scope so that you can provide them with an estimated cost of that repair if it's out of scope. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and close this inspection for this demonstration. And you can save it as a draft if you're not quite finished. In this case, I'm just gonna go ahead and say um, that it was completed, all right. This was completed, and now that's going to publish to all email users tied to the system that an inspection has been completed at this time. All right, so I'm going to leave the inspections portion, and now we're going to go down to web view. Again, this is going to take us out of the remote app and take us to the web portal, and this will look much more like what you would see if you were at your desktop uh, or laptop. Uh, op activating or sorry, operating in SmartLink network. Um, so if you're familiar with the web portal, it's pretty much the same here. You're able to see your inspections, snapshots, events, uh, your administrative functions, things that you can do there. Uh, so hopefully this tutorial gave you a, a quick look into what SmartLink and its remote app can do for you and your customers. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to email us at support at weathermatic.com. You can also phone us in at 888-484-3776. We thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful day. Again, if you need us, feel free to reach out to us. Let us know what you're looking for, and we can help you out with that. All right, take care.